we look at how producers have been using the power of good genes against worms. Those dreadful little things may be small, but they punch well above their weight in financial terms. In fact, they're the biggest single disease cost to the Australian industry. But the introduction of an Australian sheep breeding value for worm egg count has given producers a powerful weapon in the war against worms. Our newest recruit, James Fremantle, has the story. They may not look like supercars, but these white Suffolk rams are all high performance genetic vehicles. They've been bred, monitored and tested to make sure. Andrew Heinrich says commercial breeders want to use genetics to give them a clear view of their livestock's true potential. They want to know what's underneath the bonnet, they, you know, they want to see if it's got a four cylinder or a V8 and, and they want the V8s and, and they, want to, they want to drive them fast. And for Andrew, a V8 is an animal that's both highly productive and resistant to worms. High winter rainfall makes parasites a real problem here on Kangaroo Island. He turned to selective breeding 10 years ago when drenching stopped being a reliable solution. Well, after a while we realised that if we chase trait leaders that are, are resistant to worms, we um, end up getting um, that gene into our flock. And so it, eventually we get it on both sides, on the dam side and the sire side, and then that's when it really gets exciting. Now samples from every animal are sent off to Lamplan for analysis. He's constantly looking for the outstanding animals to use for breeding. He also uses some imported sires with high breeding values to speed up the genetic gain. It's meant the end of routine drenching. A lot of it is though we, we actually only drench when we need to, so we actually take samples from the sheep and, and, and take them into the vets and they'll give us an egg count and um, we'll, we'll drench on that. Um, otherwise, in the, in the past years, we just drench on the spec and um, the more times you drench your sheep, the more chance you're gonna get resistance and, and we're trying to avoid that. And there are no arguments about that here in New England, the Barber's Pole Parasite Capital of Australia, as Arthur Gates calls it. That's why he volunteered to trial an MLA-backed dipstick test that producers can use themselves. Faster diagnosis reduces the impact and the number of unnecessary treatments. You can get answers for every mob, if you so choose, quickly, and you test today they don't have to go away. Tomorrow you can go out and you can bring that mob in if necessary and dose them. So you're saving money every time, every step of the way. But Arthur's main strategy is to breed for worm resistance. He spent a lifetime trying to do it, but it wasn't until he began performance measuring and using lamb plan worm egg count breeding values five years ago that he made a giant leap forward. He's made a 30% improvement now the dipstick usually delivers good news. The new lambs from last year, after they had their test, were drenched to clean them back and were sent into a paddock, which uh, they've been running in for 10 months. No worms, nothing. And we just did that test a little while ago. So I'm hoping that uh, in the longer term, I'll be able to throw the drench gun away. <laughs> I may not, but I'm hoping. <laughs> But it's not just about cutting down on drenching, which costs the industry around $70 million a year. The hidden costs of worm infestation are far greater. In fact, it's been estimated that lost productivity robs producers of a further $300 million annually. That's around $5 per head in lost return. So when worms eat into your sheep, they also eat into your profits. Essentially, they make the sheep eat less. And as soon as they eat less, they produce less. And so if you've got, for instance, a prime lamb dam who's not eating as much, he's not producing as much milk, we can see the follow-on to lamb growth. They can cause um, a break in the wool because we're changing intake. They can reduce reproduction rate by effects on intake and then the body weight of ewes. So there's a whole range of effects that animals have. And that's a major cost issue, but it's a major welfare issue that the whole industry is trying to better regulate. The development of estimated breeding values helps you shop around for good genes because you can compare performance for a number of traits across all breeds. It can be a strategic investment. I think it's really cost effective for a commercial breeder because all they have to do is identify those ram sources that are providing good genetic information, not just on 
your primary profit drivers of growth rate and fertility and muscle, but also have additional worm resistance information as well and purchase um, flock rams from those ram breeding flocks that are produced that have that information available. At the moment, testing is only available for livestock that have been exposed to worms. The next step, still a long way off, is a commercial test for all sheep that measures resistance from DNA. But experts say that while good genetics raise the safety net, they're not a silver bullet. We have a number of major planks to worm control in this as an example. And genetics increasing host resistance is one of those major planks. The other major plank is managing exposure of the animal to the parasite. And there are other planks in terms of wise use of chemicals to be able to control those parasites as well. But back on Kangaroo Island, the lure of genetics is simple. My primary focus here is to be profitable in the sheep industry. And, um, and to be profitable, um, we've got to have good genetics that are going to perform. And uh, it's just not because they look good, they've got to be performance bred and um, very productive. And that means that I'll, I'll, I'll be profitable and I'll be in the livestock industry for a long time.